Maybe you will be after this. So my name is Marcus. I know Tristessa from a band that we're playing in. You know that Tristessa plays in a band? Oh, yeah. So we're sitting next to each other and this week we'll meet, be meeting each other a lot because we're recording a CD over the weekend. So we'll be in the studio over the weekend. I live about 300 meters that way, maybe 400 on, in Hammarby on the, other place, uh, on the other side of the water. So if you would uh, turn that up I would probably see my home I think. And I am a programmer. I've been programming uh, since uh, 98, about that, 94 actually, when I started university. So I've been programming a long time, and now most of my work is teaching others to understand programming, and teaching others com uh, concepts in programming. So this exact session, as uh, Tristessa said, I, I have actually done on people that have been programming a long, a long time. So I'm going to teach you today a way to think about programs that I promise you that even if you have parents that do programming, they might not have ever heard of it, about this. Because it's, it's not new, but it's not practiced by a, lot, by a lot of people. So when you get out of this session, you will be better than your programming parents, okay? Yeah. Anyone has a parent that's doing computer? Good. You think you will beat your... Is it your father, your mother? Both. Both, all right. Let's see. Right. What do you think is the hardest thing about writing a program? Yeah? Uh, please, just uh, have me, let me have an answer. Uh, different commands. Yeah, could be, could be. The source code. The source code, yeah. Actually, that after a while, that gets pretty easy to just do another language, as Tristessa said. You, the, the hardest thing is to think about those. The computer not understanding what you're writing. Yeah, exactly. And if we take that a bit further, it's actually to know if the program you've written is correct or not. So, in my work, people tell me, I want a program to do this. Can you write that, Marcus? Yeah, I can, I say. And I take their uh, demands and their requirements, and I try, try to translate that into a computer program. And then afterwards, they say, do it, uh, does it do everything I told you? Hmm, 
maybe. That's really hard, actually. It's hard to tell. Is this program correct or not? So if we take everyday things, if you have a flashlight, how do you know if a flashlight works or not? You test it out. Yeah, how do you test a flashlight? You press the button. And what should happen? The light should turn on. Exactly. So you, you, you think to yourself, when I press this button, a light should uh, be lit on my hand or on the wall or whatever. And you try it and you see, yeah, it works or it doesn't work. So the thing I'm going to teach you today is actually to write tests, write code that tests our program. So you're going to write a program that tests our program. That's pretty confusing, but it will get clear when we see it. So I thought we'll try a little exercise today. Uh, we're going to write a program uh, that helps us to solve something called the FIS bus counting game. You know that FIS game? Yes. You know? How many knows it? A couple of people. So, it's a really simple counting game. And this is, this is things that you don't want to do. It's, it's boring and it's pretty hard as well. So you, this is perfect for computers. They're stupid, you know. They only do exactly what you want, what you tell them. But if they get a simple problem, they can do it super fast. So, in the fist bus game, we count from one and continue upwards. But when we ha hit on something that is divisible by three, we don't say that number, we say fizz instead. So, I know this. let's do it very simple. We say one, two, and fizz, that's right. Yeah, Tristessa told me that you were the brightest class in this school, so oh, wow. I'm not, all right? Okay. So one, two, fizz. Four. Four, and then, if it's divisible by five, bus. you say bus instead, right. You played this before? No, I just... Oh, yeah, assume, good. I played one similar. Yeah, so we say bus instead. So that's one, two, fizz, four, bus, fizz. and then fizz. fizz, correct. So, seven. and seven. we continue, seven, eight, eight. 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 Fizz, that's right. Why fizz? Yeah, exactly. Nine divided by three is a whole number, three, so it's divisible by three, that's good. Bus, that's right. You're faster than me, that's good. And then? Eleven. Fizz. We'll do to fifteen, then my hand is broken. So that's eleven, twelve. Thirteen. Thirteen. Fourteen. 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 No. And then, thank them. Yeah, exactly. Then it's something really tricky comes because if it's divisible by both three and five, we say fizz bus. All right? Fizz. Pardon my handwriting. My teachers were on me all the time. That's why I went into computers because they can write for me. <laughs> So let's see if we can write, say this really fast then. Ready? One, two, face, four, bus, face, seven, eight, face, bus, eleven, face, thirteen, fourteen, face, bus. All right, once again without me showing you. One, two, face, four, bus, face. Yeah, yeah, you see? This is hard stuff. You don't want to mess, this. you shouldn't bother your head with this stuff. Let's write a program that helps us with this. If, and we, if we put this in the context of the design cycle that you've been looking at generally in technology, if you think about what Marcus has said so far, a company comes to him and gives him a list of demands for his program. What would you call that in the design cycle? Um, specification. Um, the design specification. Okay, exactly. So we're not just talking about product design. In computer programming, we have the same thing. The customer comes design specification. The test part is what we're going to be looking at as part of our design cycle. So you have your specification, you design your test, your, your program, and then you test it. But what we're saying now is actually that the design stage and the test stage in computer program don't necessarily have to go after each other. They kind of go together. Okay? So and actually, this is, in. This, is, this is exactly what I'm, uh, where we, we are at right now. So let's turn that one on again. Uh, 
because in computer science, uh, when doing computer programs, you can actually do your specifications as tests. This is now we're cutting edge technology here. But uh, for us, let's do this program. So I actually, when, before I went here, I uh, sat on my chamber at home and I wrote a little program. And then I started to write the test for it as well. So the test is very simple. It creates a little program called the FIS buzzer. You know about variables. So we save that in a little uh, variable called FIS buzzer. And then I try to send it one. So I send it the number one. I store that in the result variable. And then I say result should equal one. Right? If I say one, then in FIS bus game we say one. one. So that's pretty simple, isn't it? So I've written a little program, and actually what um, I have a little help here to run these tests for me. So below here we'll see we get some help. So I actually run the test, uh, and we could see that it didn't work. It gets it got red. You see that? And if you see way below here, we see the reason for it to be red as well. It said here, I'll highlight it for you. Sorry. There's a lot of fluff around that you don't need to care about. But it expected one. We said it should equal one, but it got something just blank. So here's my program. This is what I've tried so far. It's a very, very simple little program that gets a number, an integer, you know about integers, whole numbers? Yeah. 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 Good. So it gets a number and it just returns an empty string. That's all it does. Can somebody help me to fix this program? What should I return instead to make this test pass? Yeah, the number one. That's a really simple test. So when doing programming like this, this is called test first programming. We're writing the test first and then we write the actual program. So when doing this, we want to do small, small steps. We call them baby steps. I have three small kids. Have you seen toddlers walk? They take really small steps, right? Otherwise they tip over, which my kids do all the time. I have to raise them up all the time. So we want to take a small step as possible. And this has to do with the fact that Writing this code is not very hard. The source code it might look tricky, but we, we get used to it, and after a while we can actually write it pretty fast. But thinking about what we're going to do, and thinking about what we expect to get back and things like that, that's hard. So we want to take the simplest possible step here. And the simplest thing we can do is just to return one. And let's run the test again. Yay, green! Now we have had some a little, little progress. But this is not correct. This will not solve all of this fist bust thing, right? Can somebody come up with another test that we should try to make that, uh, to break it? Can somebody break my program and make it red? What's the next test you want to try? The number two. The number two, exactly. Good thing. So let's, let's write another test. So we say fist bus with two should return two. This is just a name, but it could be good for us to have a, a good name. That's another thing in programming that's hard actually. Proper naming. But we want proper naming. So we say in this in this way we say fist bus it two and we should get back two. Two. Right. So let's run that. Who thinks it works? What will happen? And why? Yeah, exactly. That's stupid. But look at this. The first one still works. And the second one, and if we highlight that, we'll see. So, exactly. It's expected two, but it got one. So what you just did is something that's essential for computer programming. And that's how to think like the computer does. And the thing I'm going to say about say now might offend you, but it's not meant to. So, because computers are really, really stupid. 
not saying that you're stupid. <laughs> but it, it, it's easy to think That's about what the computer thinks, because they only do exactly what you tell them. And you saw here that the, the only thing we said here is just return the number one always. So that's, that was pretty easy, right? So, uh, let's fix this then. What's the suggestion for a fix here? Three, one, and two. And only two. We only type in two. So I'm typing two? No, that would be the one. We'll, then the one would fail. And you know what's good now? We have tests. So we Very just close. let's try with two and see if you're right. The one will fail. You said, I think you're right. Yay! So we flipped it. The green, uh, the two now work, but the... In this way, we see here that uh, it didn't work because it expected one and got two. So that won't fly. We need something else. What about one and two? We have to write another test. Numbers. They copy the same test again. Yeah, we'll get back to that. Okay. Excellent thinking, actually. Maybe we can write one and two? Yeah. So how will the computer know when to return one and when to return two? Like, the Make first test is run with 1, and the second test yeah. is run with 2. Yeah. So, and if we continue to think about that, if I was to tell you that we're going to try every number possible, we up to 100, we get a, a lot of numbers that we need to enumerate like that, right? So there's actually a simpler way, and this is a bit tricky, so I, this is probably the most tricky thing that we will look at today. But you see here that we're sending in an integer. And we're returning a string. You know what a string is? That's a strange computer science term. It's just an a, a array of uh, uh, characters, just letters. If you think about Excel, has anyone ever been in Excel and tried to add things that have done funny things because it's got yeah, odd characters in because the cell is formatted in a certain way? And Excel handles it the same way as any computer programming. You tell it that in that cell it will find numbers, or you tell it in that <coughs> cell it's going to find characters, strings, and it interprets numbers as in the integers one, two, three, four differently to a text one, two, three, four. Okay? So in, in maths you would say the integer has a meaning. One means something, doesn't it? It's one object, or two means two objects. But they're digits because um, who has a number system that doesn't include one, two, three, four, the symbols? So how would you write one in Arabic? Yeah. How would you write one? How would you write oh, instead of a digit? Like that. So you still do one yeah. and you do two in exactly the no, same. No, two is like this. Okay. Like so in mm. Arabic, the digits that we record that are different. Okay. So in this program, the string, if you wanted to put this in Arabic, for example, the string would be the characters that you're recognizing. It would do that. Okay. But the number would be the value that means one object or two objects. Yeah? So that's why there's a difference between the two things. One is what it means, one is how we yeah. show what it is. Yeah. So we can actually see it here also. Here, here's the number, you see it's yellow, so that's the number two. But this is the string with a number two in it. So we could actually take some help from the computer here and. Uh, I just cut to the chase because this is you. You wouldn't be able to know this. So what we actually say here is take the number and turn it into a string. You see that? So take the number that you get get from me when I send you here, that I send you here, and just turn it into a string. So let's run the tests. Hey, it works. That's good. But we got an excellent suggestion over here. Uh, about we actually copy and paste this so I thought that I might not get into this but I, I probably need to because you're so bright you see these are almost exactly the same right yeah. you see that there are two lines in here that are very very similar actually all three of them are similar but this is bothering me when I write big programs you know thousands of lines of programs uh, of, a, of a program, you want to keep it, you want to keep the n number of lines to a minimum because this is really hard to read, really hard to m maintain. If I'm going to change something later, I don't want to be able to uh, just have to go through thousands of lines that are exactly the same. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to take these two lines, 
And we're going to create a little, a little uh, method, it's called, a little part of its own that we can call into. So I'm going to do this. I copy this. And uh, don't mind what I'm writing right now. Uh, yeah. So I just copied those two lines into a new little method over here, which seems strange. And the only thing I do here is that, that I call the fist buzzer with the number that we send to it, and then I return it. And why did I do that? That seems like a stupid thing. Well, now we can actually eliminate those two lines and call this one instead. You see that? It's just a little shortcut. We just gave those two lines another name. You can see it like that. So instead of these two lines, I can actually go like this. Uh, I remove this. And I say get result for one. And then we can actually, we don't need a, yeah, we can do this, war result. So I now took those two lines and removed them and created a new, a new little uh, call. And what's, what's really good now is that we have tests. Because now we've made a change to this program. And this is one of the things that's really hard when you're doing programs. How do you know that the program still works after we've done some tests, done some changes? That's a really hard question. But you can prove it. How can I prove it? I don't know. Yeah, we can. And we actually set ourselves up. So you're right on track. Because we actually set ourselves up to prove it now. Uh, if we change something like this and don't have a way to prove that, we, uh, that it still works, it's really hard. We don't know. You want to be let in on a secret? There's a lot of programmers that does that, that change programs, professional programmers that change programs without knowing if it breaks or not. That's not good. Have you thought about when they, they release a new Windows and Windows Beta and then Windows, and you should never update your operating system on the first release because all the bugs aren't out? But in a sense, it's the same reason, because they programmed this all, they made changes, they adapted it up until the point of release, but they never actually tested everything in it to make sure that it, it worked. And what they're, what they're doing is they're giving you, making you pay for the software to get you to test it, and then they send back, you know when Windows, where it says, do you want to send yeah, bug reports and things, yeah? So it's making you test it, rather than them testing from the start. And in the way that Man uh, Marcus is showing here, is that he's writing the test alongside the program to eliminate an awful lot of the errors that come out in buggy software. So it's a really good... Yeah, so, so now we can actually prove, as you said, that the program still works. And this, for us it's really simple. We just run the tests again. We made a change, and we run the test again, still works. That's great. So let's make, let's make that a rule. We only change stuff when it's green. Because then we can make a change and see that it's still green. So let, let's clean this up a little bit more. Uh, we remove these two lines as well. And we say something like this. Var result, get result of 2. And we run the test. Still green. That's good. So now we actually cleaned our code up as well. Thank you for that suggestion. Great, great idea. So let's continue because uh, actually this program is nice. This program over here, it's nice, but it doesn't solve the fist bus problem, right? We have tr tried with one, we have tried with two. Any suggestions for what we're going to do now? Fizz, and what's the number? Three. Three, right. Let's try it with three then. So. Now you're going to help me with the name. Fistbus3 should return... Fist. Yeah. So we send it 3, and it returns Fist. It won't go. It won't go? Really? Yeah. You want no. me to bet on it? I think no. No? No, it didn't. Good thinking. You now are smarter than the computer. That's good. And here we see why. 
It expected this, but it got three. Hmm. Maybe somehow. Yeah, so how, what should we do about that? This is good. Now, don't get, get discouraged about this red. Red is actually good. It means a little progress for us. Now we can actually write something in the real program that fixes this problem. All right? So what should we do now? Any ideas? Yeah? We, somehow, we need to check this number, right? When it comes in, to see what, what number it is. Up till now, we can just discard it. But we can actually see what number it is. Yeah, exactly. So, what would be the simplest thing we could do? Yeah, exactly. So, and for which numbers? Three. So you can you can see say to the computer something like this: If the number equals three, you see that? If the number equals three. Then we return this. Do you think it, it will pass? Yeah, probably. I think. Probably, yeah. So now we, we can actually get some help here. Let's put in, let's stop the program here. And we'll run that again. So, sorry, that took a lot of place. So now we get, when we get into the program now, we can actually see here that, that the number has the value 3, you see that? And if I remember the keys correctly now, we see that it is actually, it went into that if block. So this is a, called a block and you see that it's indented, it's a little bit written a, a, a bit in there. Do you really remember this from scratch as well? You see this indentation yeah. stuff? In no. scratch it's much easier because rather than you, you see the brackets on here, scratch just basically puts the if statement in one big bracket and then you put the things inside. So you don't have to worry about one, one thing that I think is uh, a cause of a lot of errors is the wrong number of brackets yeah. in these, end, yeah. these statements. So. And that's, that's what, what some of the called the source code, keeping the source code yeah. correct. That's hard. Especially if you don't have a great tool. Now I use a great tool called Wishit Studio here that helps me to track things like that. But now we can see it actually about to return FIS here for us. That's good. And the result is returned and it checks if the result is FIS and it reports yay, green. But this only applies to the number 3, not to Are you sure? Nine. Are you sure? Let's write another test. So, dear sir, can you give, give me an example of a test that will break this? Six. Six? Six should return fist. Do you agree with that? So, if we send it six, it should be fist. Let's run it. And you doubt our nice program, really? Oh, man, you're right. Because now it will always return it will just return uh, expected fist and return six because this is yeah it's yeah, it's always for the number three. So what we could do here is to start counting everybody if it's three, if it's six, if it's nine, if it's twelve. But that's boring. And you know the rule. What's the what's the rule for when to return fist? Multiples of three. Multiples of three divisible by three. Do you understand what I mean when I say that? If you divide it by three. It, this is how you write it, that in... Um, what, what would you get if you divide by three? Um, and it, it's a whole number. Is, a, whole number. Is, a, whole, a whole number. Yep. Okay, what would the remainder be? Zero. Always zero. It's yeah. really important just to make a link for Scratch, because in Scratch there's something called mod. Have you heard of mod in maths? Mod. I don't know if you've covered it. Yeah, mod. No, not mode. Mod. mod. So if you were to say six mod three the result will be zero. And in, in uh, Scratch, it actually uses the word mod, yep, like this, okay? So what you're wanting is the result of six mod three to be zero, okay? And in, I'll write it on, on here. So what we want is in, uh, you can actually write mod, I think, in, in this. This programming language, by the way, is called uh, C Sharp. It looks a lot like Java, but it's not Java. It's very close to Java. 
Microsoft ripped them off. <laughs> but that was about 12 years ago. So, so we want to say number, uh, the number that we got get in, if we mod that, if we take it dividable by, and divide it by 3, we should get 0 back. And this is how we write that. No. Like this. To say the number mod 3 should be equal 0. In that case, we return this. Do you still doubt our program? No. Will it all be green? You want to bet on it? No? Fingers? Oh, yeah, it worked. That's good. So, what should be our next test, though, then? Four? If I say that I think that four might not be a good test, why do you think I say that? Yeah, it's already covered. Yeah, so five. Five, that's good. Let's try that. Fist back, five should return. Buzz. Buzz. Yeah, exactly. But really good point. Why do you think that we want to do, want to see this going red? Because that's really important. We, now we, we all know that this will be red, right? So let's do it, and it, it actually turns red, and we can see here why. Why do you think it's very important for us to see that that, that turns red? Because we know the exact problem. Sorry, come again. the exact problem. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know what, what was wrong, and that what you did was wrong. Exactly. So you're, you're both into the same thing, because now we actually thought that the program, uh, or we said, this is what we want the program to do. This is our specification for the program, if you want to. The program should do this. And you can also see this here. Results should equal bus. Right? Uh, and it doesn't. So now we need to fix the program to do this. So, so we, we turn it a bit upside down. We do the test first. But you can also say that that's a specification of what the program should do in your design work cycle. So what should we do to fix that then? If number mod 5 equals 0, return boss. Excellent. I think that I wouldn't be able to say that out of my head. Something like that? Yes. Yeah. yeah? We didn't do, this time we didn't do if number equals 5. We didn't take that little, little baby step that I talked about, because now we actually know what's going on, so we're, we feel pretty confident that we know. So if you're feeling confident, then you can just continue. You need a space between F and the black. I do? Yeah. You know what? In this little uh, tool that I have called Visual Studio, I can just say, can you please fix it for me? Yeah, thank you. So it does it. So whatever I come up with, if I format stuff like crazy here, uh, let's see if this even is even possible to write. No, like that, and then I just uh, format it for me. That's that's pretty nice actually. So, we'll, uh, we have added a test for 5. Let's see if, it, it, if it's correct. It was. But I'm feeling a bit uh, nervous. So, let's try another one over 15. 5. Which one? 15. 15. Yeah, but I want to try 10 as well. I don't trust you guys. You're way too smart. Let's try. So, do you agree with that? This bus 10 should return... Bus, you agree? Yes. Yeah. You think it will be green? Yes. No. No. Yes. It is green. But this so if number is uh, multiplied by five. Yeah. So someone, somebody said fifteen here. This, that's the hard one, isn't it? So what should happen when we return fifteen? Should return fist bus. Let's call the, call it as it should be called. If I can type correctly, 
Think about how this process of working out the steps is working, because you're going to write your own program. And if you've understood how these steps have all fitted together, when you come to do that in Scratch, you'll be good. Yeah. So who thinks this, this will work? Should I, should I try it? Yes. Will it work? Yes. No. You look very skeptical. <laughs> or are you asleep? No? That's good. Oh, no, it's red. Oh, because you If number mod 503. Yeah. 15 equals zero. Yeah. Do you know what? 15 equals zero. This or five. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, so we have we have a couple of we have a couple of uh, 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 opinions here. Who thinks that this is correct? We have a vote here. Two votes. So do you remember? Do you remember the the drill? Uh, the rules? Both, exactly. So it's, it's divisible by three and by five. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think. It, it might work. Isn't it three comma five? So we, we, could, we could write this in, in more than one way. But uh, let's write it like this. If it's divisible by three and if it's Divi uh, uh, if it's divisible by 5. It's wrong. It might actually be the same thing. I haven't thought about that. So this is stating the, the rule of the program very, very explicit and clear. You see that? So the rule is it's divisible by 3 and divisible by 5. Why are you putting two signs? Uh, two equals. And two equals. All right. Uh, good question. Uh, the first answer for the equal sign is that the equal sign is actually reserved for something else. So it was called a keyword. So it's reserved for something that we call assignment. So we actually say, take the result of this and put it into this uh, variable. That's what you use the equal sign for. So then when we came up with let's do equal, <gasps> oh no, it's used up already. We're, we're, we're smoked. So they do two equals. There's a language called JavaScript, which actually has three equals in, in it to do this, because that's really messed up. Uh, and this one, is, it's also because, I don't know what one single and means, actually. I think that's uh, something about the address in the memory or something like that. Really it's the same reason up. you shouldn't use and in file names, because it is, yeah. it's in the computer and the core. So, so the short answer, that's it, this is how you write AND, which, which actually just translates to this part should be true and this short part should be true, then you go into this block. And in Scratch you can just use the word AND, yeah. but it means exactly the same thing. So uh, in uh, C Sharp and Java, uh, lines are not important, so we can actually write it like this if we think that reads better. So, who thinks this will work? Me. Me. Alright, let's go. One, two, yay! No! no. It didn't work. I knew it. I told you to who, who thought it was wrong? No, well, no, I thought it worked. You thought it worked? I was in shock. Let's check. What happened? Expected fist bus, but got fizz. Because it's... Free. The computer is stupid. Yeah, I agree with that. You should, you should say that the if, if number is. Uh... This is tricky, right? This is tricky stuff. And now we get into up till now it's actually been a pretty easy program. But now we get into where the computer's reasoning is different from how we reason. Because as I said, the computer is really, really simple. So what it will do is. They will get in here with the number. Let's actually, let's do this. I'll put a break uh, here, sorry. And let's try that again. Now we will. Here we go. Is it 15? Yeah. So what it will do, it will come in here with 15. The number is 15. 
as you see, and it will say, is 15 divisible by 3? Is it? Yes. Yeah. What does it do then? It just walks right in there. Let's see if I remember the key. No, I don't remember the keys. Uh, so it just goes in there. This is how stupid a computer is. It just said, yeah, it's divisible by three, let's go in there. What will happen if it passed that one and it comes, comes down to the next one? Is it divisible by five? Yeah, yeah. yeah so it will go wrong again. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, this is, this is not good. Move the other one up. All right, yeah. now we're talking. Oh, yes. So, yes. you had a suggestion, sir. Thank you for playing. What do you want me to do? Move the fist buzz up. Where? Um, above the three. Above yeah. Three. Good thinking, sir. So, the suggestion is to move it at the top. Let's do that, then. And try it again. So, we come in here. We see that the number is 15, and the first thing we'll check is if the number is divisible by 3, and if it's divisible by 15, uh, by 5, sorry. Is it? Yes. yes. So what will happen? It won't, goes in there, and now it actually turns green. But will all the other cases still work? Yes. yes. They should. You know what, if you ask me that, and I didn't have test, I wouldn't be able to answer, I think. Because we have done quite a lot of programming now. So, uh, but we're in a good state, because we have a lot of tests that can help us. So let's run them, and see. Yay! All green. You saw how, how fast that went by? It just took a couple of milliseconds. Actually, we can turn on timings here, I think. Yeah, you see? It's down to the millisecond. So it's shown when it runs. It just takes a couple. This is what computers do really good. Counting fast. All right. That's good. So, Tristessa, now you can choose, or you can vote, actually. Because what we've done now is that we've written the base core part of the program. We've written that it can take one number and check that that's num that number is if it's fizz or if it's bus. Or if it's fizz bus or one or whatever. But that's not actually what we wanted. We wanted to be able to say, give me all the numbers up to 15, or maybe give me all the numbers up to 100. You see what I'm going at? So you want to continue on that one, or do you want us to continue like this for that problem, or do you want to try this out yourself in Scratch? How many, how many people want to try it out in Scratch? Uh-oh. <laughs> you want to continue? Wait, what if we put a negative yeah, just number? Put your hand up again if you want to try try making your own version in Scratch first. Okay. That's on. Yeah. Put your hand up if you want to keep going with this program to make it up to 100. So the rest of you, you're just tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, they can't decide. Maybe keep going a little bit longer. We've got, we've still got uh, 50 minutes of the class, so we can do another 10 minutes of this instead of half an hour for them to. All right. So we actually got another uh, another suggestion here. Uh, that's I want to I want to try first. What happens if we put in a negative number? What should what what should happen if I put in a negative number? That depends on what the negative number is. So what what do you think? If I this is the rules. Yes. And what should happen when I put in minus four, for example? You get negative four back. Negative four back. If I put in minus uh, six. Yes. Yes. You think it should? Yes. Actually, you you know what? The question you just asked wasn't covered by the requirements. So, and this is super normal. <laughs> this happens all the time. The people that ask me to write programs, they don't, they don't care about the details on that level that you just, and they shouldn't as either, that you just post. 
So we actually have to invent, invent a new rule for them now. And you, I, I think that sounds very reasonable. Let's put in, uh, if it, so it works the same way with negative numbers, that's, the, that's our... Uh, uh, and what we could do really easy is to uh, write it like this. Uh, so we just prove how it works. Uh, neg negative uh, 4, or I, I'll put 1, sorry. Negative 1 should return... Mr. Specification, sir? Negative 1. Negative one. Let's see if it does. Yeah. Yes, it did. That's good. So let's see. Put in negative three then. What should that be? I don't know about this. We're inventing stuff as we go. This is good. Negative fifteen. Fifteen or fifteen. Oh. So now, when Tristessa, our our customer, asks us, "How does the program? What does the program do when I put in negative four? Well, you know what? I actually proved that already. So you can see from the test results here that negative fifteen should return. Oh, sorry, I didn't write out. Face should return fizz bus and should return uh, minus one and maybe just for good measures let's put in five as well to show her negative five should return bus right so negative five should return bus and it all works so now we actually, you came up with a case, we call it a case, an example, that, didn't, that we, haven't, we didn't know about. I have never, never thought about that actually. That was a great suggestion. And uh, it, didn't, it wasn't covered by the rules here, but we, we just implemented that and we just checked it with tests. So we know now how it works. Yes, sir. Uh, what if we put root 2? Sorry? Square root of 2. Yeah, but what happens when you do square root of 2? It's not a real number. It's not an integer. No, so exactly. How will it get so that will actually not... That, what's called, that will not compile. The, the, uh, the program will say, I can, can calculate this. That doesn't work. So this, this program only works with the whole numbers. So if you want to, let's, let's try something else. And i show you another part of this. Because what we want to do, actually, is we want to be able to say to the program, okay, so let, give me the whole, the whole number array here, with numbers and fists and buses and fist buses, up to 50, or 100, or maybe, let's start with something simple, let's start with 5. And then we go like this. Now we need to write, so we write it from scratch now. Fizz bus up to 5 should return what should it return 1 2 right do you agree with that yes what is it doctor says do you concur so let's write this from scratch then let's get the fist buzzer first fist buzzer equals new fist buzzer so we create one of these, uh, uh, this program, and then we say, uh, get me the result. So fist buzzer up to five. And then we say, sh uh, let's do this. For one, two, fist, uh, four, bus, right. So, a couple of things to note here. Now, we actually decided, we specified how this should be returned. We said that it should be a comma and then a space in between each number. 
We haven't said that before because n before we only worked with number one number at the time. But something else happened here as well. So let's let's uh, try to run this. It doesn't work. It doesn't compile what we said. The computer cannot understand what we've written right now. And what does it say? It says, Fist buzzer does not contain a definition for up to. You see this, up to? We haven't used that before. I just invented it. So right now, this is the whole program. Fist buzz it, and we have nothing more in it. So you, you've been with me for writing all of that. So we need a new method now. Something like that has the number, something like this. So we just said that there is an up to that takes another number, and right now it re just returns an empty string. Let's run that and see. Do you think it works? It will work? No, it doesn't. And here we see why. It expected 1, comma, space 2, comma, space this, comma, space 4, comma, space bus. What did it get back? Empty. Empty string, just a single space or whatever. What's the simplest thing we can do to fix this? You're thinking too hard now. Think baby steps. Good thinking, sir. Actually, this is about the hardest thing you can do. When I say you're thinking too hard and then you have to think, well, really simpler than that? How should that be? It's hard. It's really hard to think simple. Good work. And I really mean that. It, it, is, it is hard. This is what most grown-ups struggle with the most. I have my iPad on here, and I'm recording myself. You know why? When I, today I tweeted, you know, use Twitter? Yeah. So today I tweeted, today I'm going to teach a class of, how old are you? 14. 14, yeah. I said 13. 12, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to teach a class of 12-year-olds about test-driven development. You know what happened? A, compute, a computer company came back to me on Twitter and said, can we record that for you? We are very interested to know if that's possible to teach to 14-year-olds. To and I think you just proved that it is. So you're doing a great job. And you had, you had a great suggestion over there, sir. Let's do that. I'll take this string and I'll just paste it in here. That's the simplest thing we can do. All green. That's good, it's, it's really good, now we know that the tests actually do what we think. But it doesn't really cut it, does it? So, can somebody come up with a test that will break this? What if we just go up to 6? Should we try that? And then we need to do some serious programming. So, FISBUS up to 6 should return. What should it return? One, two, fizz, four, bus, right. So let's write six there and then set one, two, fizz, four, bus, fizz. And we'll run that again. And it doesn't work, of course not. Because now we always return this exact string. So now we need now now we need to be sneaky. You copy the code. Like, the uh, thing you've written up, the copy paste yeah. You know what happens when, when you copy code? Kittens die? No, I'm sorry. You should avoid copying code, uh, because then you actually have the same thing at the two places. So if, if I was to change the rules, and I was to say that, uh, let's return this for everything divisible by four, then you have to change in two places. So, but you're, you're onto something there though. We want to actually to use this. We'll, we'll put in a lot of work in this method, right? So we want to use that. And now we're going to do something tricky here, because we want to...
start at the number that we send into it, uh, start at 1, let's start at 1 always, and go up to the number that we send into it, in steps, right? And for every step, we call this little method that we written up here. So, when, I, when I'm doing things like this, I actually do something called metaprogramming. I just write that. Uh, start at 1. When I do two slashes like this, that's called a comment. So you can write anything you want after that. Even Swedish. Whoa. Start at 1. Go up. One, uh, one step at the time until number. It's a little bit like the specification that you can actually have uh, as you're working on each stage rather than just have a complete specification for each uh, section of your code you're writing for your game. You can do this and that will be the specification because it's what you want the program to do. Yeah. So this is just a little for us to remember what we're going to do. And now we're going to use something called a loop. Have you heard about loops? Yes. 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 Yeah? Some shaking of heads. Loops is something in uh, computer science that, that actually do, uh, does something over and over again. So you do a little uh, for loop like this. And don't mind this right now. We'll, uh, we'll get back to that. Oh, we don't mind that at all. We'll get back to this later. But this, um, this means do this block over and over again. So we want to start at 1, right? And we want to go to number. And then there's a little fix here. We want to go... No, let's do this. We want to go till we're... Yeah, so this is how you should read this. Now, this is hard stuff. I didn't realize that we are going to get this far. So this is actually three statements in one. First it said, start at one. Let i be one. And then continue as long as i is less than or equal to the number. You see that? And for each turn, so do this, uh, do this block that we're going to write soon as long as i is equal to or uh, less than number and after each block add 1 to i you follow? that's pretty hard so let's do this, let's write this uh, this way what's going on outside? And now we can call our little method fistbusset. Fistbusset, if you remember, that's the method we wrote up here with all the checks. So let's get back to this. I'll zoom in. Yeah. So let's take it one more time. Start at 1. Assign the variable i, the number 1. And as long as i is equal to or uh, less than number, continue to run this block over and over again. And after each block, increment add 1 to the number, uh, number i. So what will i be the first time? 1. one. Great. And then it does this. Please buzz it with which number? One. 1. Great. And then it continues and come up here again, and it's still equal to or less than the number we sent in, 5, for, for example. So it adds 1 to i. What happens now? 2. 2. And when it passes the next time? 3. 3. 4. 4. 5. And then it's 6. So it will actually say something. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I messed this up. But uh, we'll, we'll see about that. I think I should maybe turn that on the other side. Uh, so it will do this over and over again. And we're, when all of that is done, let's return the result like that. 
So this is pretty hard stuff. I, I can see this, but uh, uh, you're smarter than I. We got further than I thought. So it fails actually. So let's see here what it. So, so this is our test for five. Then. One, two, fish, four, bus. All right. And what we got back was, it expected, it expected one, two, fish, four, bus. It got back bus. What happened? You know what? Where Let's. Would, where would bus come in that sequence? Five at the end. Yeah. The last one. So what is it returns actually? Well, it's done all of that, but it's only returned the final one because it did the rest of it without you looking. So let's let's uh, uh, see, try to step through this and see if we understand what happens. We come in here. We see that the number is five, right? So. It starts, it sets i to 1, and it checks that it's m less than 5, and it is. So it calls fifth bus with the number 1. That's correct. And the result is set to 1. That's good. So it goes back up, and it checks, is i less than 5? Yeah. So I increment i with 1, and checks if I continue. I should continue. And I get back here. What's I now? Two. Two, that's good. And result, check this. The result is one from the previous thing. What happens now? We just write it straight over. So the result, do you remember it was one before? And now we just put something else on top of it. So we actually erase the thing that stood uh, that was in there before. So when we get here and it's three, hopefully, yeah. So now result is only fizz. That's not true. We want to add stuff at the end, right? So let's do that. Uh, so now we need to be really sneaky. We want to take the what whatever is in the result yeah and we want to add what we get back from here at the end something like this maybe no this is not right sorry oh yeah you know what i'm not going to think about it i'm just going to write it and see what happens so now i take result should be whatever the result was before and the comma and FISPAS. So let's do this. You see, this is how I normally work actually. So don't get, you think I'm a lousy programmer now, but this is how I normally work. Because I don't care to think about things like that. I don't want the computer to help me. So if this was not right, I put a comma on the wrong, at the wrong end. I put it before. That was stupid. Let's see if we can fix that. So, the, it should be... Oh, I really lost it now. Something like that. But that won't fly either, right? Because now it's just bus. Yeah, where should I add it? Me neither, actually. What happens if I add it here? So you see, I'm doing stupid th things now, I don't really know, I'm just trying stuff out, but that's alright, because we have tests that prove what we're going to do. So this is not right either, because now the commas will just line up at the end. And now I'm getting really worried about my thinking here, so sorry about this, I'm going to peek in my... Yeah, of course, sorry. So let's put result here. Something like that. What do you think? No. No. Yeah? Why not? Because uh, it will give you... It will come with... I'm not sure what, but I don't think it will come that way because the commas will be at the end. Alright, let's see. Hmm, pretty close. Pretty close. Let's check what's happened. One, comma, two, comma. It looks, it looks right, doesn't it? 
Yes. What's wrong then? Why it's isn't it? There's an extra comma and a space at the end. This is very common, and then we're back to computers being stupid. We tell it only does exactly what you tell it. So we actually need to clean that up. Why don't they just design a computer that learns? And I'm not going to. Sorry. Why don't they just design a computer that learns? Yeah. They're actually. Somebody has to design the computer to learn. Yeah. So uh, there's actually uh, there's actually programs that does that, and you know how it learns by you feeding it examples. So you feeding it, it should be like this, it should be like this. So what it actually does is that you you feed it a lot of tests, and it writes the program for you. Exactly what we've been doing, but in a much more advanced way. So this line is a bit strange, actually. So I'll just tell you what it does. It just takes and trims off the last two characters. You see, at the end here, we've got the comma and the space. And we want to just cut those off. So let's try this. Yay, it works. Both for uh, up to 5 and up to 6. Should we try up to 15 and see? 50. You know what? That will be... I'm, I have actually cheated a bit. So let's try up to 15 first. And now we're coming into what's known as boring stuff to write. Should return correct string. And have you seen, you know, in TV, when they have uh, TV uh, chefs, they always say something like, in order to, for this to get a bit faster, I have prepared it before. So I have actually prepared this before. Uh, up to 15. So I have a little string here that I prepared before that have all the numbers up, up to 15. So let's check if that's correct. Uh, sorry, now I've been scrolling like crazy. So let's try up to 15 should equal this strange string that I put in before. And it does. So if we take all the numbers up to 100, here they are. And this will be scrolling, sorry. So you see here. So I take that long, long string and I copy it. Like I told you not to do. What happens if you copy code? Uh, you have, have to change it twice if you make an error. And kittens die. Alright? It doesn't, but... Kittens die whenever you're Yeah, yeah. Kittens die anyway. So let's write a new test. And see if one, up to 100. Fist bus up to 100 should return the correct thing. So let's write 100 in there. And then put in this humongous string. No, here it is. Ah. You have to trust me that that's, that's correct. Should we do some double checking? What's this bus of 100? Bus. Bus. What, 99 then? Is that divisible by 5? No. no. Three. By 3? Yes. Both 3 and 5? No. 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 So it's this. So let's run that last one. And that also is correct. Yes? Uh, why did you have to write all the code? Because, uh, the, like, for the testing, because if you've already written the code here and you've run it, then uh, you and check the answer even if it's wrong and it turns out to be right then what's the point? Yeah, good question. Excellent question actually. So there are people, now we're coming into almost uh, you know, beliefs and what you think is right and things like that. There are people that say that if you write a test that turns green you should just remove that test because you already knew that. That was what you meant, was it? Yeah. So you could, you could actually do that. I would say that having a test like this up to 100 actually states for us that 
this is what's going to happen if I'm up to 100. So I can just read this and see exactly what's going to happen. But you already know that it's going to happen, and if it, you can check the answer. Because yeah, and you're right. Uh, I only knew, I, I already know that, but I'm now stating that very explicit. So I, I, I know I, uh, that it's uh, actually writing it another time, but it's also very easy for someone that reads this to just read this test and understand what happens. If you also think at the beginning, when we started putting them in, we had them working, but then we changed something in the programming that then made one of them that had worked before not work anymore. And we wouldn't have any record of that. And if you've not used this method, what would you do when it doesn't work? You then need to go back and think, okay, so I'll get this new thing that I want to work, working, but does the old one work? So I've got to go back and do that test again for the old thing, yeah? So when we got, we got one working, then we got two working, then we did fizz, and one and two didn't work, yeah? And because we've got all of those tests right there, we can check every change we make on the program, we can make sure that we haven't spoiled any of the tests that we did earlier. It all still works, not just the one thing we're testing at that point. But, but this is hard stuff, so you're, you're posing a valid question, because you can also argue that, all right, let's put in every number known to mankind. Then. And uh, that's a lot of tests, right? So we don't want to do that. So, but often I put in significant numbers, numbers that I think people are interested in, or uh, values. So let's do something really big. You think this is big enough? It's one million? So I, I did a little change in the program also. I added this little line that will write out whatever we send, whatever we're returning, the result. will write it out here in the window. Uh, so now this will fail because this is uh, uh, just checking up to 100 and not up to 1 million. But just to prove a point here, as you said, our program actually can handle any number now. We've written a program that can do fist bus up to any number we choose. And it will do it pretty fast. So let's see if I can, if I compile this, can I run it? Mm. You know what, let's do this. Yeah, I just run that single test. So it takes quite some time, do you see that? And why is Because it's handling a lot of things, it's writing stuff out and it's doing that for up to one million. But it's a computer. It's yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this actually, <laughs> this actually scares me a bit. Why does this take so long? Is this correct? Only 100,000. You know what? Let's, uh, let's just do 10,000 first and see that our program actually answers. Yeah, it failed. But we knew it was going to fail because we are checking for up to 100. So, uh, if we do 100,000 and run that test again, it will fail, but it will probably, you see it takes a lot more time here, lot, lots of uh, longer, longer time. And, and now, this is, I didn't want to show you this really, but this has to do with how we've written this program, what's called the algorithm, the way we solve the problem. So this is not very efficient, and you see my, pro my computer is actually struggling to, to, to do this, just at 100,000. So when it comes back, let's leave it and see what it takes. What I learned with, about computers, here we go, so it failed, with, which we thought it would, and see, let's see if it, so you saw it took all that time to return it. And uh, what I've learned a lot about uh, when doing computer, uh, computer science and computer programming is that big numbers, you realize that this is really a big number. This is actually 100,000. So it will go 100,000 laps through this loop and adding stuff together here. So let's do this. Let's see how much of my computer struggle. Uh, here we go. And I'll run it again. You see here? Uh, so it, it, it's 
it's doing a lot of work. We're, they're pushing the program, the computer right now. And now we're starting to do something called optimize. We want to write this program in a more efficient way. But now we're really into something, uh, something uh, advanced here. So we're not going to do that. We sold it up to 100, and it worked to, uh, up to one uh, to 10,000 as well. And now we're pushing the, uh, the computer to the limits. So, thank you so much for listening to me on, about this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time. I sure did. Thank you. Questions that you want to ask, just generally about yeah. programming, about career. What if you put zero in? Sorry. What if you put zero in? If I put zero. Uh -huh. I was thinking also more general questions, not just about this one. This will not work. Actually. It's not equal to zero. Why won't it work? Though? Zero to zero. Yeah. So why, what? Why, why won't it work? What is the program checking for? Uh, which is more easier to use, this one or Java? Uh, the Java and C Sharp are very alike, so they, they look a lot alike. And when you get down to the, those levels of decisions, it actually has to do a lot with the tools around it. Uh, so, you know, in, uh, if you're going to write a web program, for example, then in Java you have this... Uh, this uh, classes of tools, all, all of the tools surrounding, and Microsoft have all these tools. Which, which one do you like? So it comes down a lot to what you like. So I wouldn't say Java and C Sharp, th those are equally hard or equally easy. We yeah, have more questions. Uh, when you do like programming, yeah. do you use Windows or Mac? I program on Windows, and that's, that has to do with me being a, a .NET programmer. So C Sharp is a program that runs on .NET, uh, which, and all of those are from Microsoft. And you think, what do you think that Microsoft wants us to write on? Microsoft. Microsoft stuff. So they supply, supply a lot of good tools for writing on Windows. But as you see here, what's this computer? An Apple. An Apple. So actually, this is a bit strange, but I'm actually running a computer inside my computer. I have these two. So if I do something like this, and then I go like this. That's, that's hacking. That's so you see, here, here's my computer inside my computer. So I can change over to my computer. So this is mind-boggling and your head is... Uh, I have this too, but my window says this Windows dot is not verified. And I can't ah, ah. You have a sheet Windows. Yes. Yeah. And it's not so Windows 7, it's Windows 7. I actually cheated you a bit because you you didn't get to see that before. But it's actually a computer inside another computer, which is really when you start to think about that, you can go crazy. So what computer do you prefer? I I prefer a Mac. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I've been on uh, I've been doing Windows uh, using Windows for the most part of my life. But nowadays I use Mac. Is this Windows hacked or is? No, it's real. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. Oh, as I'm doing, uh, as I'm doing, as I'm doing computer professional computer program, I wouldn't dare. Okay. And I don't think that you should either. Um, for designing a web page, we use HTML. Yeah. And what is the difference between this and HTML? So that's a great question. Yeah. So, Mr. Uh, Sir, can we have some light? Yeah. HTML is actually another computer language, and this, this computer language is for solving logical problems. So, you know, we, this is logic, it's when we... Oh, I've removed some code here now. Sorry. Like this, we go up here. If the number is bigger than 3, then do this, otherwise do that. Uh, HTML, that's actually a... Uh, let's call it a layout a layout uh, language that tells your browser, you know about browsers, Google Chrome, Internet yeah. Explorer, any more browsers? Firefox. So we say to the browser, uh, something like this. 
we say h1 and then high. And that tells the browser, if you see this, display it in bold and big letters. How big? How bold? That's up to the browser. So we just tell the browser that this should be a big heading, the first size of a heading, heading 1. So it's not programming like this, because this is programming like, you know, should, you should do this and then write this out to the stream. But this is what's called, known as declarative programming. So you actually tell the, tell the program that display this in this heading, display that in, the, in this heading. So it's, it's another programming language with a whole other purpose. In terms of websites that do anything, the HTML isn't, isn't controlling any of the... The interaction. No. It's just saying what it looks like. That's all. Oh, but isn't it, for example, if it's a BBC website, the news which is written in it, isn't it uploaded through? Uh, it would, it's it would call different things. So yeah. within HTML, you can call programs. So what's program usually happening in things like that is that when you say "get me," uh, so it's uh, something like uh, BBC. Co. Uk, of course and then news, and then uh, news number one. Then it goes down in the database and pick up the news number one. So in the database we have a news called number one. And then we start to plot it out, like in the heading should be the heading of, the, of news number one. The text should be the text of news number one. So we create a document like this and send that back to the browser. And then to actually get news number one from the database and create this document, you write code like this. But the actual document is just static, uh, display this to the browser. We're going to look at the, that later in the year when we do some web design. Yeah. But it's good that you do the programming first, mm. so you understand how the back end of the, of the website works, rather than just... You can go on, you can bring up a text document, you can type some HTML code and make a page present itself, but it's not on the internet and it doesn't do anything. It's just, it's exactly the same actually behind Microsoft Windows if you type and put some pictures in. If you've ever had it where the file gets corrupted and you can't read it, you can start to see, or if you open it in the wrong program, mm -hmm. you can see all the code behind what the computer is actually seeing. Yeah, You're black, seeing what the computer is told to display to you, yeah. but actually, What's behind that is the same kind of markup language as HTML, a similar kind of make it look like this, basically. So, yeah. So, if we showed you that on, on last time. Yeah. So, basically, saying what it needs to look like. So, here you see uh, this is a list item, a lot of stuff. What if it's a video? Yeah. What if it's a video? So, if it's a video, you, you can do two things. Either you point to a file on disk, the video file on disk, and then you send that whole file over to the, to the, um, to the browser. Or you can, what's known as streaming, that's as you send small bits after each other. That's two ways of doing it. Any other questions? Any more questions? Yeah. No? Where did that work? Sorry? Uh, do you know why? What, what is zero? What are we looking for here? Integers. No, is zero an integer? Yeah. Is it? I, I oh, think no. it is actually in, in the C sharp sense. Okay. But here's the trick. Do you, do you remember what we, where we started? One. One. And we said continue as long as pi is less than the number we sent in. And we say one is less than so, so it, gets, it gets confused and it starts in the wrong, wrong end. So that's probably a test that we should put in. What should happen then? And then we get into really tricky business when, what should happen when the program don't know what to do? We'll have to think about that. Okay. All right. You've been sitting very quietly for a very long time, so thank you so much. I'll be around if you want to ask me some questions. Yeah. Thank you so much. For okay, what we'll do, yeah, let's do that. Um, you know you can download Scratch at home, it's free software, so you can do this at home.